My name is Patrick Mukabi. And I am Mary Ogembo. Welcome here to my studio at the Golden Art Center. Today we are going to show you techniques of how to paint. I'm going to show you how to work with the negative space and also how to draw with charcoal. And I'm going to show you how to use the palette knife technique and how to paint with two colors. Karibu. Negative space, take one. I take two primary colors, mix them together, and create my color schemes. I'm also going to work with the color concept, which means working with a hot color and a cool color. First, I take my primary colors, blue, Take my red, and I take my yellow. So these are my primary colors, and I'm going to mix two of them to create my background. For my warm background, I'm going to mix yellow and the red to create an orange. So I need a lot of yellow and just a bit of red. And you want your color to enter and completely cover the brush. some water and now I'm going to paint my background for the background I'm going to apply two layers and the first layer I'm going to leave some spaces and I wait for it to dry before I apply my second color so in the meantime I'm going to take the two other colors red and blue to create purple for my second background and this one I need just a little bit of blue and a lot of red quite a lot of red and apply let's apply for my second background for my second painting and again, I'm going to leave some spaces. Wait for it to dry a bit, and then go back for the second layer. So now I think we can go back to the first painting. I think it's dry enough for my second layer. And again, adds a bit of more water. Now I'm making it more dilute for my second layer because I want still my first layer to be seen through the second one. Okay, so we finished the background and now we go into the negative space. Negative space means removing what you don't want and you leave your object in the center of the painting. And for that, I'm going to think like a sculptor or like an architect who designs spaces which are empty and then we bring the positive objects inside. And for that, I'm going to use white paint to remove what I don't want. So I clean my brush completely and I need a lot of white paint, a lot. So I need my white paint to remove what I don't want, to remove everything around um, and leave 
my object in the center. So I need a lot of white in the water, a lot of water. And I'm going to create a negative space of a landscape. And the landscape consists of a small forest in the background and a tree in the center. So I'll first start by removing the space around the tree. And I apply as thick as possible the paint. And if you notice, the white actually takes the tone of the background color, give it the rough, rough edges. And then I come down here and I continue. I imagine where my tree is. I move both sides of the trunk. So my tree comes all the way down here. And this is the shadow of the tree. And then the hardest part is creating the branches. So I remove the space between the branches. So I'm not painting the branch but painting the space between the branches. So this is one branch here. This is my second branch. And if you want to notice what you're doing, if you're not sure, you just close your eyes for one second and open, and you'll notice what you're doing. You'll see if you're going right or wrong. create two smaller branches and that's my negative space so for this one is a hot concept of a hot color a hot day to create two more branches here two more branches so I've mixed two primary colors to get purple and orange and then just by removing all the surroundings Removing what I don't want, I've created a simple landscape with a tree and its shadow and a small forest behind there. And also again, this one, the small forest behind it. Yeah, that's the simple two color painting. Palette knife technique. I always start from uh, sketching and it, I use the charcoal to sketch. Okay, so from there I'm going to fix uh, the sketch just before I can start to paint. So I'll have to uh, move the canvas outside and fix it. So from sketching and fixing, I can now start to paint. And I'm going to start by putting the lines and they are going to be in black color. So I'll have to fix I think I've covered all the lines using the black paint and um, I need to let this dry. I'm going to scoop different colors onto the palette and uh, mix it for the background. I use a lot of paint in my work. And the palette stroke uh, go all directions. There is no particular direction that I take when I'm painting. So I just let my hand move to all different directions. And that way I get different strokes. Okay, I'm going to move to the next color, the next layer. So I'm going to 
uh, mix lighter color and that is uh, yellow ochre and white to highlight the, the mask. Right now I'm going to do the final stage and that is to highlight the direction of light and so I'm going to just to mix the paint which is the um, yellow ochre with a bit of just a, a little bit of white Shackle drawing, take one. Today, we're going to work with charcoal and rubber, and we're going to do a simple drawing of a landscape. So you can get this charcoal in the art shop, or you can use charcoal from where you burn takataka. Okay? And it's easy and work with. So the first thing we're going to do with our paper, we're going to use it in a portrait because it's going to be a portrait of a landscape, okay? And the first thing I'm going to do is to divide the space between the skies and the ground, and it's just below the center, just a bit below the center with a straight line. And then on top of it, I'm going to do a crooked line, a crooked line, like that. And then down here, I have again space, and I put a smaller line, just half a line, and then a small line here. And I put a triangle. This is going to help me for my trees. And I'm going to put from this line a long tree that goes all the way up until it wants to go outside the paper, out like that. And then a small tree. A small tree comes down like that. And this is my first layer. To continue, I will need to remove the whole piece again and start it all over again. So by doing this, I'm creating layers and layers. Layer number two, again, straight line, crooked line. You do not need to follow the first line. You can always change the lines anytime you feel like. Again, half a line, triangle, and the tree. Again, the tree you can change if you do not like the way it looked like in the beginning. You can change, and then the small tree again. In there. So we have the second layer. This is layer number two. And again, I'm going to wipe it away. Layer number three again comes down. Straight line. Crooked line. Again, you can change the lines if you want to. Half a line. Triangles. And the tree again. Again, if you want to change your tree, sometimes you want to add another branch or sometimes you want to leave out a branch you have put on. It's always, you can always change any time, but don't forget the small tree. That's layer number three, and I'm going to wipe it again. And then I go again to the half line, small line, triangle, and the tree. Don't forget the small tree because it's getting covered inside. Again, you can always change the shape of the tree if you want to change it. You can always change the shape of the tree. Again, I'm going to wipe it away because it's still not very strong. Number four, number five now. Straight line again. Crooked line. You can change again the crooked line if you want to. Shade between the straight line and the crooked line. Again, half line, small line, triangles. Tree, again, you can change the tree if you want to change the tree. You can still change the small tree. If you want to change, you can add extra branches 
or leave out some branches if you are not interested in them. And again, we are going to wipe it out because it's not strong enough. We're going to layer number six. We are going to now ignore the straight line and the crooked line. And we come forward and work with the tree, the two trees. So draw the straight line, this one here, triangles, and the two trees. If you want to change the tree again, you can change them. There is no rule that says you cannot change. You can add extra branches or you can leave out the branches. So I'm going to make very simple leaves to make my tree look like an acacia tree, thorn tree. And add some leaves. Number seven again, we go again, with two small lines. Triangle. And the tree. I can again change my tree if I want to. I can add an extra branch or leave out a branch if it was too many branches. Put some leaves again. Add some extra leaves. Leave out some which were, if there were too many. Don't forget the small tree again. The small tree, because it's disappearing, people tend to forget the small tree. It's like forgetting the baby in the supermarket. So don't forget the baby. Wipe it away. Now I am going to ignore the small tree and work only on the large tree. And so I put the straight line, triangle, and the tree. Again, if I want to change the tree, I am allowed to change the tree. If I want to add extra branches or leave out some branches, it's OK. It's OK. Again, I still want some more power into the, my drawing. And maybe I should do one more layer. And I wipe it out again. Quite strong. And I go like, I do the lines much stronger and much thicker. And now the leaves, I make them very strong. I can add extra leaves still. I can leave out some. I can change the tree. It's always, you can always change the picture anytime you're working on it. You can always change it. You don't need to always like remain on one line, change it. So final is to now to bring the light and shadow inside it. And that one I'm going to use the rubber, simple rubber. It's actually the same as cooking. When you cook food, you mix a lot of things into the food and then you finish it with salt. So this is going to be my salt today. And you don't put too much salt, just enough salt to make the food taste. Don't spoil the food. So I'm going to start with a straight line now with my rubber. I'm not redrawing the picture again with the rubber, but just highlighting a bit here and there to make it interesting. So I follow the straight line. And I jump the trees. Remember to jump the trees. And then I'm going to bring some of the light again down here, just a bit, making it rough just a bit with the tree. So I'm creating now the ground. And then the crooked line, I follow with the rubber. So the crooked line in some places is disappeared, but it doesn't matter because I can create another crooked line with the rubber. And I jump the tree. Remember to jump the trees. I can see a bit of the crooked line here. And then again, the small tree. Do not forget the small tree. I said, if you forget the small tree, you forget the baby in the supermarket. There. Between the straight line and the crooked line, I'm going to create again an impression of a forest by just taking the rubber and rubbing small lines. And 
going upwards. You have to make them going upwards because trees grow upwards. And then I'm going to add some branches. Just a bit of branches here and there. You can put another one inside there. Okay. Now I come to the small tree. And now, again, put some light into the small tree. And I'm just going to rub on the side where the light is coming from. And I go up the trunk, the branches, all on the side. And I rub opposite to this line on the opposite side, the big tree. there there each branch don't forget each branch and finally on top of the leaves on top and then on top of the leaves you can make the rubbing quite rough just to create the effect that it's not a smooth surface, it's broken surface. We'll cut here a bit to create small branches. And there, our simple landscape. And what I've done today is just to create a simple drawing which has got perspective because the two trees are the same size but because this one is far away, it becomes smaller. So we have perspective and then we have light and shadow. We are creating light and shadow. With it, we know the sun is going to be on this side. This is the shadow. And then by rubbing out and rubbing out, I was actually moving the forest backwards. So when the sun is far away, it's much weaker. This tree, the forest is weaker than the main tree, which is stronger. When something is near, you make it much stronger, more visible. Yeah. And then, of course, there are things that happen which we can't control, fingerprints, which do not spoil the picture. And the final, I think, is just to give it a name. And to give a name to a picture is if it reminds you of a place, a day, a situation, you can give it the name. I can call it Lazy Monday. I can call it Happy Saturday. I can call it the Deep Forest. And today I think I call mine, it reminds me of Naivasha. I think I should call it maybe Naivasha. Thanks, and that's all for today. Two color technique. I'm going to use two colors, a yellow, pale yellow, and it's a pale olive green. It's yellow mixed with a green and uh, the white paint that I have here. So I'm going to start by mixing uh, for the background. So I'll put uh, some paint onto the plate. And uh, I will scoop some white and mix. And so this is the color that I'm going to start with. And I'm, sta I'm starting with the background using the knife.
I have to paint all through to the around the canvas, so that paint is not enough. So I'll have to mix again. This time I have to be careful not to use the same palette that I used because I'm going to mess the white paint, so I'll scoop with another different knife. And then just quickly mix it again. It might be different from the first hue, but it doesn't matter. But I'm also still using just the two types of colors. Yeah, and as you can see, it's really different, just like I said. And there, my background is done. So I'm going to move on to the next step. And on a different plate, so that I still, I, I, I again have clean colors without contaminating them. So um, I'll also clean my pal palette knife. Then just make quick circular lines. Then I'll come to the next paint. The same, same way. Before I let it dry and just before I forget, I will have to bring it out so that I don't forget the bottom because I paint around the canvas as I told you earlier and just with my remaining paint do a touch up at the bottom so then I have a uniform hue all through because sometimes if you paint and you come to it later on you might end up not getting so this is just to show uh, the audience or the, 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 the viewers that it's possible to make uh, a painting using very limited number of colors and yet it will still come, back, uh, come out looking very appealing. So this is the piece of art and I call it Mama's Fabric. Mm -hmm.